And now, Greg's thoughts. Tonight's episode, Final Cut Pro X. Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Greg, and I'm going to do just a quick overview of what I think about the new Final Cut Pro X. Now, first off, I want to make it perfectly clear that I was all for this upgrade. I was very excited about it. I had actually done a lot of jobs recently that uh, the features that they explained to me earlier would have been a lot useful. So I picked it up uh, about uh, yesterday, and I've been fooling around with it all yesterday and all day today. And I have to say I'm very, very, very shocked and disappointed at the decisions that they made for this program. It's not about the fact that it's different. It's not a matter of the fact that the, interface, the UI is completely rearranged and the, everything is moved around. That doesn't bother me. What bothers me is the fact that they dumbed down everything that Final Cut was. You have absolutely almost zero control when you want to do something. Everything's set on automatic pilot, which is really bad. You don't want to do that. Uh, you never want to have a program on automatic pilot. You want to have complete control. That said, um, <laughs> there is uh, little to no options uh, in the forms of exporting out. You have Pro ProRes to export out and QuickTime, and that's it. That's all you get. Uh, it has multiple options for sound exporting, but you can't go in deeper. If you want AIFF, that's fine, but that's it. You just get AIFF if you don't get to choose anything deeper than that, which is a big disappointment. Secondly, you, can only, you can't have multiple sequences open at once. It's one project open at a time, much like After Effects, and that, that's horrible because if, they know, if Apple knows anything about editing, there's always constant revisions, and sometimes I have one to four different versions open in my timeline at once. So basically, I have to close the project and reopen an older one in order to access that version, which is also horrendous. Um, some of the things that are pretty cool is that uh, it works great with the metadata. All, all the stuff is stored in one area, uh, so you don't have to worry about jumping drives or, or, or media managing to like a different drive or anything. Everyone's, everything stays uh, with that project, which is kind of nice. Oh, another thing, Apple Apple's slogan is hilarious for this, especially it's the... Uh, it's the th uh, post is about to change. You're damn right it's about to change. It's about to change about 90% of their professionals moving over to either Premiere or Media Composer Avid because they just can't do what they need to do in Final Cut X. Now, I understand this is a 1.0 release and people are ranting and stuff, and I don't really want to make this a rant. I want to just kind of explain to people like why this is bad and why you shouldn't get it as a professional tool. I mean, my brother who's... Thir who, my brother who's uh, younger than me who makes unicycle videos, he'll have, he'll love this because it's drag and drop simplified. He can make music videos all day long. It'd be great for him. Um, but not so much for me. I need a lot more control and, um, customization than what it offers to me. And the biggest disappointment with this entire product line is it shows where, where, where Apple's mindset is and Apple's mindset is, well, we really don't want to cater to the industry anymore. They don't want to fight uh, against Avid, they don't want to fight against Premiere or Adobe. They just want to be like, you know what? You guys can head the industry. We're gonna go ahead and target soccer moms and dads, and that is really disappointing to me because for the last ten years I'd been a devout Apple fan. I, I, I started on a Mac from and from iMovie, then I went from iMovie to Express, then I went from Express to Studio, and I've like basically mastered this whole suite. And I heard rumors about this when they announced Final Cut X, and I was really hoping they weren't true. Uh, but they were true. They're not targeting professionals at all. They're they're targeting uh, consumers, consumer market, mom and dad, little brother, little sister, uh, teenage, you know, teeny bopper wanting to document her road trip or whatever. That's basically who they're targeting, which is a very big disappointment for me. This program in a nutshell is basically if Final Cut Pro and iMovie had a baby, this is what you would get. It just misses so much. There was so much stuff taken out and so much stuff that puts it to shame as well like um just stuff not being able to have <laughs> to customize your project settings to whatever you need to sometimes you know if you're you're an editor you know there's multiple multiple different codecs you can work with and ingest and you can't do that uh you can you can work in h264 natively which is nice but but what they don't tell you is that it encodes it in the background while you're working in h264 to prores so you're eventually getting that prores uh convert over so does not really, and if you finish the edit before it converts, you can't do anything. You can't export it. So it doesn't really. It, that's that was that was a, a buy point for me. I was interested in that, but they kind of lied and misled me about that, which kind of sucks. It's just a really bad program. I'm really actually shocked that Apple went this direction. I'm actually been looking at uh, Avid 
uh, for the next for the last few days. And here's something that's interesting too. I currently work at a post house, and I'm an assistant editor. And one of their two Final Cut Pro editors, they have two Final Cut Pro editors in house. But everyone else is avid. And uh, when this was coming out, the avid editors were really scared, and they were like, "Oh no, you know, if this comes out, and this is gonna like wreck avid because people like Final Cut more. It's starting to encroach on the industry more and more and more." And I was like, yeah, dude, I mean, it looks really good. It looks really good. I was very optimistic. I was like, looks really good. looks like it's going to come right in and, and, and take control, you know? I mean, all the new stuff they added, sure, it looks a little different. But hey, you know what? It's okay because it's they're building it from the ground up again. It's fine. Well, when literally the day it came out, I went into the office and, and the Avid editors were, were like walking out of the high, high-fiving each other and dancing because Apple had just shot themselves in the foot so bad with this one. And uh, they've just been teasing me all week about it. Just be like, hey, man, what's going on? You're, you're going to get that 12 dead hour job with Final Cut Pro, uh, Pro and cut that bar mitzvah? And I'm like, yeah, 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 that's what I'm going to do. Um, so I'm getting zero respect from the Avid editors at my post house, which I will should. Apple completely let me down on this release. Um, there's just so much you can't do, and I can't fit it in in 10 minutes of, uh, of this YouTube. There's just so much left out, like so much completely left out and uh it's it's just horrendous i mean the only way you can ingest footage is through firewire that's the only way you can't ingest through a deck through a kona card nothing there's no support like that and you know what people are saying you know it's a 1.0 release you know don't worry about it you know it's they're new they'll add it in later but you know what the fact of the matter is is that they should have added this stuff on release because it's kind of industry standard now when Final Cut came out, yeah, they, they were plugins and add-ons, even with 6 and 7 for stuff that didn't work, like the red workflow and, and the and the login transfer for like the Canon cameras and stuff like that, like those drivers and stuff, you needed those. That was, that's an, that's excusable because it was out and people adapted to it. Now this thing, this thing should have adapted to it already. There should have been, there should be no leeway between this release and having to add stuff three, six months down the line. Everyone who, everyone who likes it, that I've read online that likes it says, I can't wait to see it three, four, five, six months from now, I'm like, no, this is unacceptable. All these gaps should have been filled at release, you know? And if, if you guys do have a chance to play around with it, which uh, I really, all you have to do is open iMovie, basically, and that's, you're playing around with it, except you have no timeline in iMovie, so at least not the version I have. Yeah, the magnetic timeline, it's really difficult. Everything moves with it. And if you don't want it to move, you really have to dig really deep in the interface to figure out how it you, you can turn it off because you can't turn it off but there's way to like get around everything moving together once but it's very difficult to go inside and you have to dissect it to like figure out okay i don't want you to move with this oh here's how i have to do it but it takes a lot it takes a lot of effort to do that it's not like a point and click thing like Apple was was saying so if you go against its grain it just has a huge issue with you but overall you guys it's a horrible program i give it i gave it one star out of five it was overly hyped it was just horrible i mean no no post house in the world is going to take a program that has an export to facebook and youtube button standard built in seriously because they actually have a export to facebook export to youtube like in, in the export buttons instead of you know export quick time conversion and then having all the options they just have youtube in that and that loses so much respect in the editing world i can't even tell you especially from people that were we were scaring like like I mentioned before the avid editors high-fiving in the office it's 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 an awful it's an awful awful program do not buy it I encourage everyone who has bought in who is reading this review to to write Apple and say what did you do why did you do this why are you why did you take so much stuff out and dumb everything down to, to consumer levels uh, this was a supposed to be a pro tool the next generation and it's not it's it's I it's iMovie Pro that's what it is it's iMovie Pro is what it is and uh, guys, don't discredit me. Uh, I, I don't really upload stuff on YouTube a lot. Um, a lot of my older videos are really old, and I just do them in spare time, and I, it takes me minutes to do. I actually, I'm a real editor. I actually do do stuff for TLC and E and Comcast and Warner Brothers and stuff like that. So I, I do work in the industry. Don't be fooled by all the like little stupid stuff on my YouTube that's just like for fun on the side that I literally spend like no time on. Um, but in the end, this program just doesn't pull through. It's it's one small step forward and 35 steps backward. And there's no reason for them to start this far backward. And you guys, I'm going to close with just saying that this program is horrendous. It's not for professionals at all. It's for, it's for grandma to edit her grandson's bar mitzvah on. That's what it's for. So uh, thanks for listening to my review. Go ahead and rate and comment and subscribe if you want to. Uh, I will be doing probably more reviews on this as uh, it gets later in the time as, as patches and stuff and uh, plugins and third-party developers uh, 
put their two cents into the program as well. So everyone, thanks for listening.